Okay, I think I. Good afternoon. Good morning. Namaste. Is am I audible? Yes. Okay. Yes, you are. Yes. Thank you. On behalf of all of us in the back room today, connected from Delhi, Delhi, Mysore, and Barcelona, and on behalf of Central Zoo Authority and Sri Chamarendra Zoological Gardens, Mysore Zoo, I extend a warm welcome to all our listener participants. Friends, zoo community is a global community, and there is a lot to learn from peers through connecting practice. The pandemic may have limited our physical travel, but have opened up new vistas of virtual communication. Today, through this digital platform, we bring to you some very esteemed speakers to discuss and dwell upon topics that would be of interest to each one of you registered today. At the onset. I would like to thank and welcome Dr. S. P. Yadav, IFS, Member Secretary, Central Zoo Authority, who has given us this uh, full support to undertake this webinar series. I would like to request him to give his opening remarks. Dr. Yadav is an Indian Forest Service Officer of 1989 batch of Uttar Pradesh, a thorough wildlifer. He has a distinguished career serving in important positions in the state and the center. He has been instrumental in bringing policy reforms for global tiger conservation. And in his current role as member secretary, he's preparing Caesar Day for its new era of facilitation role. Over to you, sir, for your opening address. Thank you, Sonali. Um, at the outset, uh, good afternoon to all of you. And I welcome Martin, the newly appointed CEO of World Association of Zoos and Aquariums, and congratulations for taking up this position. Good afternoon to Mr. Gavi and Masur Zoo for facilitating this webinar. I think uh, I must congratulate Dr. Sonali Ghosh and her team for organizing this series of webinars in this pandemic lockdown scenario. I think this is the best option available with us. Uh, just to give a little brief about what we are doing in CZA Day, uh, Central Zoo Authority was created in 1992 by the Government of India by amending the in Wildlife Protection Act 1992. Martin, the Wildlife Protection Act in India is the backbone of wildlife conservation laws. And it has very good enabling positions. Like in India, no zoo can be established or can be run without the approval of Central Zoo Authority. So before 1992, there were unplanned and mushrooming growth of zoo. There were monaseries, not very well planned uh, upkeep of wild animals in captivity. So the government thought to bring this, this um, established Central Zoo Authority, and now Central Zoo Authority of India is playing a very important role. It's a regulatory authority, but it's now changing its role towards facilitation. Uh, there is a obvious, a visible paradigm shift in the role of CZA. We do provide technical support to Indian zoos. We do provide some financial support to Indian zoos, but basically Central Zoo Authority provides a regulatory framework, like how a zoo is to be established, how the zoo is to be run, all what uh, the CZA approves, their designs of enclosures, animal exchange within the country, between the countries. This is all, this all uh, job is rooted through CZA. Uh, as you are aware, uh, last time in, during the last WAZA conference, I had uh, the fortune of meeting Martin and all other colleagues there in Buenos Aires in October uh, 2019. So CZA is the institutional member of WAZA. Uh, next, Narsimha, next please. So in India, zoo is not only, zoos are not only providing outreach and awareness to the people in general, but they are also involved in conservation of endangered species. Martin, uh, you would be amazed to know that in India, on an average, seven to eight uh, crore, like 70 to 80 million people, they visit our zoos and safaris. 
when we say zoo this includes rescue center uh, zoos safaris and also some species conservation centers in india uh, the zoos have been very successful in some species conservation like vultures red panda snow leopard mouse deer crocodile gharial and they have been very good tragopan tra and there has been very but limited uh, one plan approach like ex situ to in situ introduction and all so there is a scope of improvement so the cjd is also facilitating professional animal management practices through its technical cooperation there are uh, next slide narsimha next slide please narsimha next yeah right so uh, there are at present 150 zoo 152 zoos in the country and you can see in the map they are widely spread across almost all states and union territories of the country next please as i said cjd is institutional member of waza but besides cjd there are nine zoos who have uh, acquired the membership of waza they are uh, besides cjd wonderlo zoo chennai gohati zoo banargetta in uh, bangalore recently the chatbir zoo of panchkula punjab has also got this membership nandan kanan zoological park in bhubaneswar and national zoological park new delhi nainital zoo rajiv gandhi uh, zoological park pune and of course this masuru in karnataka they are they have already attained they have acquired the membership of waza next please we fully as cjd we are fully we fully support and commit to the waza's animal welfare goals waza is i know that they are striving to achieve high welfare standards for animals in our care because zoo there are many uh, people who criticize keeping animals in zoos as well because from the wild habitat we are keeping animals in captivity so it becomes our moral duty and responsibility to provide the natural ecological system a kind of replica of habitat in the zoo as close as possible so that animal our target should be that animal should be happy if animal is happy then zoo management should be happy right so we uh, the animal uh, high standard of welfare for the animals gets primacy the zoo management they play very important role in species conservation they are they they are like animal welfare leader they educate the people educate uh, the visitors they become authoritative advisor on animal uh, well being and animal keeping so waza animal uh, welfare commitment statement also includes what i have said earlier that provide environments that focus on the animal's physical and behavioral needs this is this is our moral responsibility and we are duty bound, bound to provide all this enabling environment to the captive animals next slide please uh we um, uh, um martin you must be aware that uh, cjd is embarking to prepare our 10 year vision plan and we have also uh, the government has decided to at least upgrade 10 zoos in the country to the global standard and this 10 zoos will become a role model for other zoos to come to the standard of uh, the global level and what we are planning there is already a committee which is uh, working on it and very soon we will come out with a plan vision plan for 10 years to develop these zoos to attain the global standard the global standard uh, as you can see on the slide treating all animals in our zoos and aquariums with respect make high animal welfare standard as i said if, if animals are happy zoo managers and people visitors everyone will be happy the focus has to be the well being upkeep health of animals ensure all husbandry decisions are underpinned up to date animal welfare science and veterinary science veterinary science is again very very important we i feel strongly feel that uh, we need to enhance the capacity of our veterinary doctors who are looking after the animal zoos like this covid 19 and all uh, zoonotic disease 
they they need a focus in capacity building of our veterinary doctors who are looking after these animals build and share uh, animal welfare care and welfare knowledge skills and best practices i think waza provides an excellent platform where all zoos and aquariums the leaders the managers they come together to share the information share the experience share the best practices so that is again a very very important thing i think waza is playing a very important role in expanding the knowledge paradigm the horizon the uh, of zoo management in the world and uh, i think global standard also talks that everyone should comply with the local legislative framework or the rules and regulations of each individual country that's also very very important and uh, cz is playing an important role in ensuring that all zoos they comply with the national regulations rules and regulations and also uh, the international standards <clears throat> next please so way forward and future of indian zoos i think uh, right now as i said out of 152 there are only nine zoos member of waza there is immense potential and uh, opportunity for all other zoos to join waza and get the benefit of uh, the international uh, knowledge available to join that platform to share the best practices learn from each other and this will also facilitate uh, facilitate the animal exchange programs between these countries and the international zoos i think uh, indian zoos they have lot to learn from the international experience of waza and i'm looking forward i'm excited to hear about uh, what martin has to say and uh, the questions from the our zoo management thank you very much thank you very much sir uh this has been uh, extremely beneficial as it has set the tone for this specific session uh, i am sure we are all uh, looking forward to how the indian zoos can visibly learn from the global best practices and also share their own experiences to attain a global best practice and standards of course we are also extremely thankful to waza the world association for zoos and aquariums to give us this extended support and dr martin jordan the ceo the chief executive officer of waza is our keynote speaker for today who will help us understand how indian zoos can contribute to waza's goals thereby attuning themselves to the global thinking of zoo management dr martin is a veterinarian uh, and only now i have come to know that his heart and profession both beat for the zoos so once again thank you for your valuable time and over to you now sir Okay, thank you for this very kind invitation. I just want to check that you're able to hear me. Yes. So thank you very much for this invitation. It's a great pleasure to be here today with you. Um and I feel very honored that the Central Zoo Authority community and the community of Indian zoos are giving us this opportunity to share our Wasa perspective. Uh thank you to Dr. Yara and Dr. Sonali Ghosh for for the organizing this of course also to the team um of Missouri Zoo for helping us arrange this meeting is is very unique for us to have this great chance and of course I I don't want to forget to thank a lot of people abroad your community that through the years have helped uh, Wasa to remain connected So thank you very much for that. A very quick introduction about myself uh, just so you feel more comfortable with me and you know who I am. First of all I'm I'm from Chile. You can see on this map is that very long thin country, probably one of the countries that is the farthest away from India, but I can tell you that my connection to India is through your nature when i was young i used to watch these spectacular documentaries on tigers indian rhinos gharials gharials are one of my favorite animals so i feel um very privileged to have the opportunity to interact with all of you i'm a veterinarian by training i started when i was 14 years old as a zoo volunteer my first task was to clean the 
exhibit of birds and help the zookeepers to feed them. Later on, I had more chances to do more. I work as the former executive director of the Latin American Associations of Zoos and Aquariums, COLAPSA, which brings together Latin American countries from Mexico to Chile uh, to work on similar goals as the ones um, Central Zoo Authority has. And I have been with WASA since November 2017 and appointed very recently as the WASA CEO. Again, I'm truly inspired by all the positive change that, that your zoos, that aquariums all around the world are bringing. A quick snapshot of where our WASA members are around the world. And what I would like to bring the attention on this slide is the fact that we have a global international community to support all of us, to learn all together from one another. When we see the WASA membership, it looks like this. We have 282 members, which are zoos and aquariums in over 60 different regions. Then we have 24 zoos and aquarium associations. Of course, Central Zoo Authority is one of those 24 associations. And these are key organization to help WASA with its goals because you represent either nations or whole continents. Then we of course have corporate and affiliate members and we have live and honorary members. And when it comes to India, I, I need to thank Dr. Yara for already explaining this. Um, we have nine members that are zoos and aquariums and fundamental for us, essential element for us is the central zoo authority. So this gave me a chance to get to, to understand a little bit better where our members are in India it was a good opportunity to learn more. And to be quite honest, I have not had too many chances to know our members in India. So I met Dr. Yara uh, last year in, in our annual conference in Argentina. It was a great opportunity to start that conversation. But I also have discovered new ways to, to get to know more about all of you. And just a few weeks ago, I discovered this um, live streaming of Indian rhinoceros at Bangalore Zoo. I probably spent 10 minutes at watching this rhinos interact. So just highlighting that there's so many other ways to get to know each other, particularly now that, that flies are restricted and that meeting each other in person is more challenging. So if we go straight to what um, the main topic of discussion today, which is animal welfare from a WASA perspective, you might know that in 2015, we published the WASA Animal Welfare Strategy. So this strategy is available at the moment in 10 different languages. It can be downloaded in that link that I'm sharing there. And after this session, you will have this presentation, so you will be able to, to access to all of those links. We're always adding new languages to the translation of these guidelines. So if any of you are interested in supporting us with translation, that's always an option. One of the key elements of the animal welfare strategy is recommending the five domain models as an approach toward animal welfare. So if you have gone through the WASA strategy on welfare, you will see that it involves four physical domains, nutrition, environment, physical health, behavior, and these four physical elements influence the mental domain, which is the fifth domain. And overall, this explains the welfare status of an animal. After we published the animal welfare strategy, there were many more um, steps for WASA to help um, improve animal welfare. As we all know, animal welfare is a science of the one we learn more and more. There's new evidence, we gather new information, we have a new understanding. So one of the different, one of the many different tasks we have is to develop the WAS Animal Visitor Interaction Guidelines. We, have, we had them, I think it was in 2016, and now we have updated them and republished them in April of this year. So what is an animal visitor interaction? 
We see different types of interactions in zoos and aquariums. This can go from visit or feeding animals, uh, touch pools in aquariums where you're able to touch some of the animals, walk through exhibitions with birds in aviaries or with lemurs. We're seeing new, new developments in those terms or other kind of interactions as the ones you could have uh, when you are having animals in presentations in which people can have a different interaction with them. They, they might be able to touch them, etc. So we came with these guidelines to make sure that uh, we were considering animal welfare in those interactions. And there are five key elements to consider. One of them is to monitor and assess animal welfare of those animals involved in those interactions make sure the animals are suitable for these interactions. And this can come, this comes from a species level approach, but it could also be an individual. You might as well have an animal that enjoys interacting with people and an animal from the same spe species who doesn't enjoy those interactions. So we want to be mindful of that. Of course, for these interactions, we need staff that knows how to detect if an animal is feeling comfortable, uncomfortable, how to make sure we take care of those animals during those events. Messaging is a key element because we want to make sure that our visitors, our audiences, see these opportunities as a way to connect with animals, care for them, and commit to protect them. So we must ensure that we're um, exposing our audiences to natural behaviors, and we're introducing them to these animals in a respectful way. And finally, as always, safety is um, an essential element. We must be sure that not only animals are safe, but our visitors are safe, our staff are safe. So to know more about these animal welfare guidelines on visitor interaction, you can visit that link. It's translated in a few languages and it's a six page document. I invite all of you to explore if they have recommendations that can be implemented at your facilities. And a second effort done by WASA has been to discuss how between association we come with animal welfare evaluation process that are consistent from a global perspective. So for that, in August 2016, we had a WASA, um, the first WASA accreditation summit in Singapore. So different associations of zoos and aquariums from all over the world gathered and they presented what they were doing at that time. In, in the case, for example, of the Latin American Association, we didn't have an animal evaluation process in place at the time, but we were developing one. And this was a unique opportunity to interact with colleagues from all over the world who were also on that path or had already developed their own programs and for them to share their experience with us. And after that, three years after that, we saw the need to meet again. This time we met in Barcelona. It was in July last year. And from Central Sioux Authority, we were pleased to have Dr. Grish and Gupta, who represented your community. And in there, we made many decisions and recommendations for our WASA Council on how we saw moving forward with this animal welfare evaluation process taking places through different associations in the world. So after those meetings, we presented WASA Council with some ideas, we had a proposal and they approved what we call now the 2023 WASA Animal Welfare Goal, which is that WASA national and regional associations must have an animal welfare evaluation process in place and such processes must include specific elements approved by WASA. All WASA institutional members must comply with this process. So what does this mean? Basically, to achieve this goal, we establish four principles. There is a need for associations to agree in the definition of animal welfare. 
the many definitions of animal welfare, and we want to be mindful and considerate of those national, regional differences. So we're working through the WASA Association Committee to come up with a definition that everyone's agreed. In the case of India, you're represented there through the Central Zoo Authority. Then each association must have an animal welfare evaluation process in place or rely in another association animal welfare evaluation process to evaluate its members. What do we mean with this? I will give an example. If there was a Chilean association of zoos and aquariums, which is not the case, this association could rely, for example, in the Latin American Association Animal Welfare Program. And they could say, okay, if you want to be a member of the Chilean Association, you need to go through the animal welfare evaluation process of the, associate, of the Latin American Association. And then once you have that status, you can be a member of the Chilean one. And why is that? It's because we also recognize that there might be national associations who might not have all the resources to run this program. Some of them have only one staff member, some of them have only volunteers. So we recognize that there are different realities. The third one is that association can implement their animal welfare process differently. So for example, the African Association of Susan Aquarium would have a way to implement their animal welfare evaluation program that is very different from the European one. And that is perfect. We recognize that there are differences. What we're aiming for is to have some consistency on some elements that I will show in the next slide. And first and foremost, WASA members must get their animal welfare evaluation from its WASA recognized regional or national association. And if for some compelling reason they cannot get it from that association, they can go to another WASA recognized association. So what we're aiming to do is all of these animal welfare evaluation programs across the world to be consistent in seven elements. And these are the seven elements we came with from that meeting in Barcelona. And these are all ideas that were presented by the different regional and national associations of Susan Aquarius. So first of all, each program must be based on an animal welfare model. And that model needs to be compatible with the WASA animal welfare strategy. And it needs to be science-based and consider best practices. The second one is that we need animal welfare standards. So each program must have their own standards with the ones they evaluate the wrong members. There needs to be a verification process. The verification process means that your association or another association visit your zoo and does a review, a thorough review of your facility and it's done, it's an audit in place. So it's more than just looking at your paperwork, at your policies, it's also seeing in situ how you are implementing those. A fourth element is the capacity of the association. So as WASA, as WASA will go through the different associations programs to make sure they comply with these different elements, we also need to be sure that if you have a program, you are able to carry that program through the years. And capacity of the associations mean access, access to experts, having staff to run this, having the time to do this. Fifth element is training. So if your association will have a program that has inspectors that goes to a zoo or an aquarium to make sure that they're complying with your association standards, these inspectors need to get some training to make sure the way they assess institutions, the way they evaluate institutions is standardized. Sixth and seventh element is about the intervention and complaint processes. So we ask the associations to have ways to intervene at a facility, at a member facility, if for some reason there are issues with compliance. And of course, we need process to know if there is an issue with comp 
compliance. And that's why we're asking also for a complaint process. So someone, in a way, can report back if there is a concern on this facility complying with the animal welfare standards. So this is what I have for you today regarding animal welfare. For us, it's extremely important to be connected with you. And again, we're very privileged to have today that opportunity. And I cannot avoid myself from quickly mention conservation, since it's a key element for WASA. We had the conservation strategy also published in 2015. You will have the link here to download it, read it if you haven't done it already. And something we do in terms of conservation is to represent the, 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 the world community of zoos and aquarium at different international forums. And some of them, like the ones you're seeing here, CITES, the Convention of Biological Diversity, or the IUCN World Congress, are forums in which it's key for us to have input from different nations. So we invite India through the Central Zoo Authority to share your thoughts, your concerns, issues you want to raise in those forums that we can do through WASA. And one that is not directly connected to conservation but is much needed for us to run our conservation breeding programs is the International Air Transport Associations as they set standards on how animals need to be transported. So you can get your community involved in all of these forums through the WASA Associations Committee. Very important for India is that we have the Asiatic Lion International Stat Book that is run by Wildlife Institute of India. This is a very important international stat book and it's the one international stat book that is run in India. So we're very grateful by the work that your community does to keep this international stat book updated and the fact that this that book is available to share it globally. And also through the years, we would like to thank you for your support to the Indian Rhino International Stat Book. We encourage all of the members in India to share data on the International Stat Book of this species. You might have been contacted already by Dr. von Huval from Basel, Basel Zoo in, in Switzerland. If you are contacted by her soon, Please share information with her so she can keep an updated Indian Rhino International Study. If you haven't had a chance to check our How to Reduce Single Use Plastic at Zoos and Aquarium Guidelines, we invite you to do it. Plastic is a constant fight we are having, and, and we want to make sure we get better at this. And as I get to my last slide, I really would like to congratulate Central Zoo Authority and all of the Indian zoos on this publication. This is the newsletter, quarterly newsletter from Central Zoo Authority. I welcome this document. It was so good for me to read it and understanding more of the zoos in India. I encourage you to continue with this publication. It's a great way to show the world what you're doing. Thank you very, very much. If you have any questions for me, you can contact me there. That's my email. I think now we will also have uh, an opportunity to share questions. Uh, but if not, you can write me an email if you don't have a chance to do it today. Thank you so much, Dr. Martin. Uh, that was very informative indeed, sir. And uh, the entire process of how animal uh, welfare, is, what it means, the definition, and in terms of the seven elements and so on, uh, it really gives an eye opener and uh, something to look forward to for all us uh, in the Indian zoos. Also for new ideas to how we can contribute. Uh, there are a few questions already. I can also see in the chat box of the YouTube where we are live that uh, some questions have come up. Uh, there's, these are related to the aspect from our uh, registered participants as well. So I will, uh, if time permits, uh, we will uh, discuss them in the end. Uh, meanwhile, uh, now I would like to request uh, Mr. B.P. Ravi, Additional Principal Chief Conservator of Forest and 
Member Secretary Zoo Authority Karnataka to give his uh, uh, summary remarks. Ravi sir is a 1992 batch forest service officer serving in his home state of Karnataka, a gold medalist forestry graduate. He has a checkered career record spanning field and policy positions in the state and at the center level. He was also the executive director of Mysore Zoo for over three years and undoubtedly is much loved by the state zoo community. So over to you now, sir. Hello. Hello. So, Nali? Yes, sir. We can hear you, sir. Uh, we okay. cannot see you, but uh, we can hear you clearly. Okay. Can I go ahead? Uh? Yes, please. Yeah. Yes, sir. Hello. We can hear you, sir. Thanks to CZA, Member Secretary, and Sonali Ghosh, Martin, and Mysore Jew and other Jew community. This is a wonderful opportunity for all the Jew directors, veterinarians, biologists in India to have an interaction with the Waja CEO. Mainly the focus of today's discussion was about animal welfare and uh, Central Zoo Authority Member Secretary has enlisted actually the, the ideas of Jews in India and the context. In my perspective, Indian Jews are still evolving and compared to the international Jews, uh, where Central Zoo Authority which came into existence in the 1992 after the amendment to the Wildlife Protection Act. And we have a national Jew policy since 1998 onwards. And as per the Jew policy, the, our Jews are actually supplementing the, uh, the conservation strategy in India, uh, especially the in-situ conservation, the national parks, wildlife sanctuaries, and other areas, conservation. The, Indian Jews, if I speak in the context of India, are constrained by the three important resources. One is financial resources, second one is human resources, third one is material resources. And the Waja and Waja is set up an organization at the international level which gives an importance to the animal welfare, animal ethics, and the standards that have to be adopted by the Jews and the similar action actually this central Jew authority is being uh, uh, done in India but as a Jew director from the perspective of the Jew directors and the state Jews say that most of the Jew directors feel that actually the as uh, member secretary put it rightly that central Jew authority must move from uh, regulatory mode to the facilitating mode because in uh, states in the states actually okay in, in the states actually the people uh, uh, have a different uh, uh, understanding of the actually the role of the Jews uh, primarily even the forest officer or the wildlife are, they feel actually Jews are not required at present so being an institute manager for quite some time, I do agree with this uh, observation of the Central Jew Authority member secretary that the captive animal conditions actually, they put a lot of stress. So why actually, the, why the existence of the Jews must be there? Why, uh, first of all, people questioning, the, first of all, why the Jews should be there? But uh, we can't do away with the Jews at this Indian uh, context. We have about uh, 60 million people or 70 million people in India, the visit Jews every year. I come to my state, about uh, 6 to 7 million people do visit the uh, Jews. Jews are the first source of actually interaction between the children and the general population to the wildlife. At this context, actually, Uh, at this 
chapter i would like to reiterate the jews the role of jews is to focus mainly on the conservation education uh, because conservation education is the one way that actually we can change the the idea of the actually the conservation idea of the conservation about the general population towards the animal welfare because many people do visit the zoo with a curiosity to see the animal they rarely they might have seen the tiger they rarely might have seen the lions so they do visit the zoos primarily to see this animals from the curiosity but we we concentrate mainly in our zoos so that the zoos should act as a sense of the conservation education the focus on the different people like uh, the school going children college going children they provide an opportunity for the uh, the school children and the college going students to have an uh, idea of the actually the wild flora and also the uh, fauna uh, we focus mainly on the education programs thereby this do would impact the conservation strategies in the long run our day to day practices of the do do mainly consist of the three important elements one elements one is visitors second is the wild animals third is actually environmental settings as a Do director, the my job was actually to to take care of this actually the needs of the visitors, the needs of the, you know, the needs of the animal. So the the central agencies or the other agencies they actually try to confirm. are uh, try to regulate the their role of perspectives from the point of the animal welfare but the state zoos are actually always try to concentrate more on the visitor facilities so we have to balance between this visitor needs and the actually the animal needs to balance this visitor needs and the animal needs we require resources to generate resources in indian context is very difficult because indian populations cannot afford like uh, 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 the western populations to um, spend money on the welfare activities adopt the animals therefore uh, uh, we our zoos are actually uh, catering to the needs uh, mainly of the general population when the general populations visit the zoo first they want to see that actually whether this zoo is a clean kept clean whether the animals are actually fed well and uh, how, how this environmental settings are provided so the clean green zoos are actually our first idea that actually we implemented in the our uh, state secondly we require lot of resources uh to implement these uh, uh, ideas of actually this uh, the uh, waja uh, welfare opportunities uh, uh, the resources actually are not forthcoming in the uh, indian setup so how to actually get the resources is an a huge challenge for the zoo managers in the uh, indian context because when you have the resources definitely this animal welfare would be taken care of this one uh if in the absence of the resources it is very difficult to actually the for a zoo manager to take care of the animal welfare animal nutrition and all these aspects and the capacity building is another aspect there actually our veterinarians zoo managers must be exposed to the the international standards so i urge the waja and the central zoo authority at least to select the few zoo directors and the two veterinarians to get an opportunity it was sponsor them to see actually what are the standards actually other zoos are adopted in the uh, in the other countries and uh, in this respect i say that actually that uh, we require a sort of a financial strength financial support both by the central zoo authority from the waja 
and also the technical help and material help also material help i say particularly that in case of an exchange of the animals uh zoo directors feel that most of the time they feel that uh it is a very cumbersome process to get this actually animal exchange is done and i heard the central zoo and also the waja use of technology for example that so many formats are there in the animal inventory and all those things instead of actually getting the animal inventory for the year if there is an a system in the web based system is there where the zoo director can in just order delete the 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 uh, the treatment or the deaths or the inventory of the animals it is very easy instead of actually generating the report so i request the actual central zoo authority member secretary to have an use of technology where the web based system is there for all india zoos where actually the zoo managers can uh, make their entries and whatever the format instead of actually uh, Uh, now getting the reports every now and then this is one aspect i say that this is very much uh, required secondly that uh, secondly they feel that actually animal exchanges deals they get a lot of time to actually to, to implement because of the change in the veterinary protocol at the national level the national level uh, therefore these two aspects are very important from the central authority to bajaja Uh, to get this uh, uh, the animal exchange is to be done very quickly and uh, if possible the training capacities of the, the the zoo managers and veterinarians if possible this financial resource to the zoo so in these two words i must thank this sonali goes for taking up this uh, initiative and also i must appreciate the central zoo authority for taking this uh, uh, initiative to thank you so much sir uh, uh we could hear you clearly uh, there was a bit of a uh, uh, disturbance with your video but i think absolutely fine and i think you very rightly captured the essence of uh, how states and how indian zoos uh, are able to manage and are look for the and uh, in this regard all your uh, valuable points and suggestions especially for central zoo authority waza uh, is something that we look forward to working towards in the next uh, couple of months and i think this uh, webinar is uh, is one of the series of uh, the collaboration that we want to do with uh, waza with uh, with the state zoos and everybody else and and especially for this i would like to thank the team of mysore zoo especially led by dr rajit kulkarni and his team who have been exemplary and extremely positive in coming up uh, with this uh, beautiful partnership i uh, would uh, like to open up uh, for questions because i think we do have some time and uh, we do see a couple of questions also on the chat box uh, having said that uh, uh, if you permit uh, i would like to uh, because we did get a couple of questions uh, on the registration form Uh, so we would like to take that up and perhaps we could have one question each for dr martin dr yadav and uh, 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 shri ravi sir so uh, martin for you uh, the question is that and and this is i'm also seeing is being repeated in the youtube uh, chat box is that whether animal welfare and captive management can be achieved uh, simultaneously Uh, what should be the priority for managing a zoo and uh, uh, especially how do you educate the keepers and how do you sensitize them and and how do we make sure that they are always heard in a better dignified way uh, you know i bundled up a, a couple of questions but the essence is that uh, you know captive management animal welfare and even in terms of zoo keepers the animal keepers how do we all have a positive uh, synergy in all of this dr martin perfect i i will share a global perspective and i can think that there could be some differences between countries but for us from the goal of the zoo 
the ultimate goal is conservation and the daily task is the animal welfare. So for that, of course, you need to have um, an operation that is sustainable, that is financially sustainable, that is open to the public, that feels the public expectation. And we do think that that can go in hand with animal welfare. So um, I come myself from um, a country that doesn't have a lot of resources when it comes to zoos and aquariums. And what I have seen as progress is that a lot of the progress has to do with practices and philosophies of work. So in those ways, you can achieve things um, without really compromising your, um, the management of the zoo. I, I think um, we are seeing globally people more interested in, on animal welfare. And as they expect, they have some expectations on the way that animals need to be cared. So a zoo that shows that provides good care to, to animals, many times is a zoo that will have visitors, that will have both local and foreign visitors. So in a way, what we're trying to, to show is that animal welfare is not in conflict with the business of keeping a zoo. Yeah. And visitors are getting, are feeling this need to be ratified, to, to be guaranteed that animals are receiving proper care. And that is something that associations, central zoo authority can bring. A body that says this is a zoo that is committed to this. Um, then I think the other question was on how you involve zookeepers. And I, I have to say that, again, I think the way we move forward as a community of zoos and aquariums in different professions or expertise, whether it is the zookeepers, the veterinarians, the educators, we're seeing many associations being created for them and where they are able to, to grow is through exchanging experience with other colleagues. Um, I will I will share some some very specific examples that I have seen do work um, within country. There's some exchange programs for zookeepers that go to another zoo and learn new practices, or even Facebook groups, WhatsApp groups, anything that allows you to have this level of of network. Unfortunately, I don't know specifically the case of zookeepers in India, but at least in, in Chile, where I am from, there's limited information for zookeepers. If it's not in Spanish, if zookeepers are not given the opportunities to acquire that information. So sometimes you need to create opportunities for them with training courses within your own institution. You might have a capacity building a workshop or other opportunities for them to, to grow. Um, Yes. So with that, I think I answered both questions. Is there a third one that I forgot? I'm checking here. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I answered. Yes. Uh, yes, Dr. Martin, I think you've answered uh, most of it. Uh, it's just that what should be the first priority for managing a zoo, uh, if you would want to? And, you know, there are a couple of questions on the chat box, like, uh, uh, in terms of you know tourism and do you uh, can how can zoos work with tourism association? So I think essentially is is there a is profit or is in terms of uh, you know which comes a priority profit making vis-a-vis -vis welfare and especially you know in this post uh, pandemic situation we do mm -hmm. hear a lot about Western zoos getting closed because there's not much of revenue. So your mm -hmm. thoughts on that? So just to, to be clear on that, from a WhatsApp perspective, the priorities for zoos is conservation. And to do conservation, yes, we need to take well care of the animals in the zoo, that is welfare. To, to achieve your conservation goals, of course, you need a sustainable financial model to, to allow you to invest in all of these elements. And there's different models um that can work for a zoo so there's private zoos there are 
government owns, owns zoos, they're mixed between those two models. Um, there are zoos that are visited mostly by locals, some other zoos that are visited by tourists. So it will, have, it will be up to each institution to discover what the way forward will be for them. Um, but what I can share, for example, is that through this pandemic, there's a few zoos that are members of WASA that we're seeing that, of course, they, they relied a lot of, on, on tourism. And as tourism is not happening right now, they're, being, they're seeing their business affected. So we will have to evolve on more sustainable models if we're dealing with the pandemic or second waves of the pandemic. And, and when we're talking about receiving tourists in our zoos and aquariums, uh, it is important to know where they're coming from and what their expectations are. I will share just one experience we're having uh, at Oasa since this year. You might know Expedia, who is a tourist provider online and that provide access to, to flights, to uh, renting cars, hotels, but also um, to tourist opportunities like visiting zoos and aquariums. So last year, Expedia asked us, how can we know that a zoo is a good zoo or not? Because we're seeing a lot of complaints from our, our audiences and clients saying that they don't want us to promote certain zoos. And we talked with Expedia and we told them, we are promoting that by 2023, all of the WASA members will have a animal welfare evaluations done and they com they will comply with those. So Expedia said, okay, please share your list of WASA members because these are the zoos that we will be working with. The ones that right now are committed to animal welfare and that after 2023 will have a way, a way to prove it because now they're complying with this. So again, it's conservation. To achieve conservation, we need to do animal welfare. And to achieve all of this, we need to be to have sustainable uh, business models. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Martin. Absolutely spot on. Uh, sustainable models, business models for animal welfare. I think that's the, the mantra uh, takeaway from this uh, uh, webinar. I would like to pose another question to Dr. Yadav uh, now, sir. Uh, okay. And uh, this is also from the chat box. Uh, that's uh, will there be now more stringent uh, guidelines uh, for zoo visitors post the pandemic? What do you feel and how do you think that uh, Indian zoos can improve their standards to be at par with international global standards? Okay, so about pandemic, this was a really unprecedented situation. We never imagined that such a situation will occur. There will be no planes, no flights. And so, um, this is unprecedented, uh, unprecedented situation across the globe. So, uh, regarding pandemic, we have issued several guidelines, and I believe that after this pandemic is over, there will be a new normal. And still, we have to think about uh, the new normal. What would be the situation in zoos? How to because in zoos, their important components are animals, our staff, vis and visitors. Everybody has to be safe from such zoonotic disease. And we have to take special care of animals, that from human to animal transmission doesn't take place, or vice versa. Similarly, visitors. There will be a lot of safety concerns. Like after pandemic, I came to know that a couple of zoos have opened in India, but the visit, there are hardly any visitors. There are very few visitors. Everyone is afraid. There is a fear of psychosis about this pandemic and other zoonotic disease. So we have to uh, think over it. We have to ponder over it that what would be the new guidelines. Maybe uh, we have to all follow the social distancing, the use of sanitizing, uh, all sanitizers, and all precautions which the Ministry of Health, Government of India has communicated. We have, in fact, we are very, very quick in issuing advisories advisories regarding pandemic they are on our website so i think there will be a new normal and uh, we will think about it and issue a separate guideline there has to be some stricter regulations so that disease doesn't spread from human to animal and animal to human being 
staff remain safe because i uh, shared their courage their bravery that during this pandemic they are keeping uh, providing feed keeping um, all uh, necessary facilities available to the animals and that hats off to their courage and bravery um, the, sonali the next part of your question was about can you repeat so how do we yes so how to improve the standards of indian zoos to uh, yes. bring them at a comparative global standard you you explained in your presentation but if you yeah, want right 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 so uh, as ravi also said that and we also feel that indian zoos most of the zoos are not up to the global standard as i said in the beginning we uh, the central zoo authority is working on a 10 year vision plan for the country at the same time we have selected or in the process of selection of 10 zoos to bring them to the global standard this is one aspect the planning aspect but i feel that there are number of very good zoos at international level we like twin cities concept so we will work on twin zoo concept we will try to bring uh, like uh, singapore zoo or U uh, usa based zoos and try to develop synergy between two zoos say uh, say mysore zoo will have mou with singapore zoo something like that so we learn each uh, from each other the best practices the global standard and all and uh, about finances ravi spoke about the financing thing i strongly feel that every zoo should become a center of profit we should and that too sustainable we should innovate we cannot depend on the government for everything we should have innovative financing mechanism public private partnership uh, that's very much required and for that we need to manage the zoo's profession there are very important aspects of zoo management like the staff the capacity martin also spoke about it ravi also spoke about it we need very qualified professionals to handle the animal similarly to handle the visitors visitor satisfaction is very very important uh, in zoo so we have to ensure that when the pig visitor enters the zoo and when he comes out of the zoo there is perceptible change in his experience his knowledge his perception about the animal upkeep in the zoos so with all these things i think we are moving in the right direction and we will achieve uh, the standards which we talk of uh, the global standards thank you thank you very much sir uh, i think the twinning of zoos uh, is uh, excellent and i think we are embarking towards that and uh, we would be in the coming months uh, sharing more and more inputs on that i think we have just about time for one more question and then we will uh, close this uh, so this question is for uh, ravi sir so you did mention but uh, i think we are more keen to also understand that how do states especially karnataka uh, are now managing especially in the post covid times uh, since the revenue would have uh, dipped drastically and there is likely to be a uh, restriction in the near future so if if there is any plan or strategy of sustainable model that you have so kindly share so no me this is very difficult question uh, and actually for uh, karnataka zoos we require about 1.5 million rupees for every day our revenue is about just about 100000 so on average but our zoos are generating only about uh, 3 million rupees per month and now during this covid period what we did actually uh, mm -hmm. our zoo contacted the district in charge minister they took them to the zoo they took them around this zoo and uh, they shown that the amount of the fee the order is required expenditure the, um, the number of personnel they are requiring their salaries required and uh, during that time actually that it is very susceptible very sensitively bring to their notice actually the zoos require uh, the help certainly from the state government and also from the corporate sector and also from the leaders we made an appeal to the spiritual leaders the religious leader the policy maker bureaucrats politicians we brought them to the zoo 
because of these efforts are actually we arrived about 3.6 or 3.8 crores about 38 million rupees during this two months today also i am in one of the jews mini jews chitradurga i paid a visit to this two uh, spiritual leaders interested to visit the jews and also see that uh, this is the time if we want to help this uh, jews this definitely that will help us the our the animals help her as well as the this our service for the keepers they come forward and we made an appeal to this uh, this corporate also the mining companies and uh, some other this industries they have come forward like infosys sudamurthy have come forward donated about 2 million rupees the birla group ultra tech they have donated about 1 million rupees per other mini jews so we don't require actually in the terms of actually yeah, money they say that if they want to come forward to take up any developmental project they can straight away can take up and execute the development project as approved the by the central zoo authority in the master plan this is one way of actually roping in them and getting the resources second way is actually my i must appreciate my zoo with the mysore bangalore and this uh, shimoga zoo director the sustainability the concept of sustainability is not only in terms of actually financial resources we have a huge tract of the lands are there there we started growing the fodder for example my shimoga zoo director is meeting this entire fodder requirement for these animals from his own uh, the own area and also this banergata zoo also you know about getting two tons of the the fodder from their own they are saving up 20000 rupees per money now my mysuru zoo director also started taking this fodder cultivation plan we have a series of ponds actually in the banergata one day we went there and actually there was an a problem actually fish could not come in the lockdown period and there immediately my director and this veterinary doctor come there sir we have a ponds a series of ponds is it okay for you to no to harvest the fish i said okay so sometimes the rules may not permit us so looking into the condition i said we go ahead if some questions are asked and we have devised a method we started harvesting the fish in our ponds therefore they are meeting this ponds uh, from the uh, their own ponds the fish requirement even must be must do also now we are slowly introducing that why do we have a fish culture therefore actually we can meet our part so therefore in this context i request this actually central zoo authority and also watch out to consider one proposal even though the rules are there to consider actually the animals which are aged about 25 years yesterday i visited a zoo there is a 25 year old lion is there and 26 year old leopard is there and this is the odd time actually you have to take a some decision whether how to manage this animals there are rules are there whether we can go and actually euthanizing this animal this is the one question actually we have actually put this uh, no this put this question to our administrators the state government and our chief field of pardon other question that actually uh, the central zoo authority actually when you started comparing with this other international zoos for example the martin in his course of discussion he has raised the question of actually touching this animal for example there are huge animals number of animals are there people also wanted to come and touch but that our rules won't permit that so we have to devise considering this animal will pair and the actually the pressure on our zoos is there any way actually middle way therefore in some special circumstances set up people who adopted these animals can go there and interact with this animal feeding and everything therefore we can devise a strategy the meeting the uh, feeding articles charges and we can get this uh, resources from this type of visitors there are many ways but it is a difficult time but uh, the state government this is why that actually as the state government zoo must be considered as a forestry activity they say that in the central zoo authorities and the uh, government of india 25% activities is considered as a the forest activities except the visitor facilities what prevents actually the government of india or the state government to actually give resources ಡೆವಲಪ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಮೇಂಟೆನೆನ್ಸ್ ಚಾರ್ಜ್
because you are i believe you are in central uh, zoo right now but uh, having said that we could hear a few animals and birds applauding when you were speaking so i'm sure they are in with you and i we really appreciate the csr initiatives the the uh, uh, initiative to go out and uh, meet up with spiritual uh, leaders and everybody else and uh, you know engage in the empathy and compassion aspect of uh, animals uh, welfare Uh, so with this, uh, I think we do not have much time uh, because I think we have done the full one hour. And uh, so I would like to especially thank all the speakers today, especially Dr. Martin Jordan, who was able to give his time on a weekend and uh, give this very beautiful uh, initial talk. Of course, uh, Dr. S. P. Yadav sir for all his support and the new initiatives being uh, taken up uh, under his guidance and leadership in the. is a day and uh, ravi sir of course for his very passionate and uh, uh, informed uh, 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 passion for the zoos and the zoo management i would also like to thank the backroom team both at caesar day and mysore zoo for the smooth functioning of this webinar the recording of this webinar is now available on the youtube uh, channel and we will share the speaker presentations with all the registered participants so until we meet till the next time thank you one and all thank you thank you sonali thank you martin thank you ravi goodbye take care stay thank safe you very much